All right, we're back with one final video for now. You see over my shoulder here, we have the antiderivative of x dx uh, over x squared plus one, or this dx really could be on the outside. It doesn't, doesn't really matter whether it's in the numerator or after the expression. But um, what we have here is a rational expression, and we can't break it up like we did with uh, the previous videos when there was a monomial in the denominator. In fact, we have a binomial denominator. There's no way to break this up, so we've got to look towards u substitution to help us out. Um, and in fact, u substitution is going to do a great deal for us here. Um, we are looking at the idea of, okay, what basic antiderivative rule involved a fraction? And uh, the only one that worked out in that regard was when we had uh, 1 over x dx. Remember, 1 over x is antiderivative was the natural log of the absolute value of x. That's what we're going to have to work with here, except that instead of having 1 over x, we're looking to have 1 over u. All right, so u is going to be what we initially see in the denominator. Let's get that on the board. u is going to be x squared plus 1. All right, and now we can get our du, and the derivative of x squared plus 1 is going to be 2x dx. That's a nice, simple anti uh, rather derivative for us to take, and it sets up nicely for what we see in our original problem there. Okay, we can definitely sub in our uh, denominator. U will go in for, let me switch back to green. U will go in for x squared plus 1. Okay, in the numerator, um, we have x dx. Du will come into our integrand only if we have 2x dx. So just like in our previous example, we need the 2. So let's get it in there. And if we put a 2 on the inside, what else do we have to do? Yeah, we have to have a one-half on the outside. That way we've multiplied by one and we have not upset the value of our function, okay? And so that means that du will now come in to our numerator, but keep in mind that our one-half is working its way down and our one-half is still outside of our antiderivative. It's just going to become part of our answer. It's no big deal. It's just kind of hanging on until the very end. Um, what we've done here is we have du over u, which can be written in this manner, or if you prefer, we could write this as 1 over u du. It means it's, it's the same thing. It's just two different ways to write the same thing. Uh, this is something that's very similar to what you see on your basic antiderivative sheet, except instead of 1 over x dx, it's 1 over u du. Either way, it's leading us towards natural log. And that's going to be our, the main part of our answer. So we have our one-half coefficient that's going to stay in our antiderivative. And then we have the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Okay, we've done our antiderivative. Now, this is a good thing. Um, we're almost done. We just need to remember that we don't want an answer in terms of u. We want an answer in terms of x. So let's do that. Let's back substitute in. So we have the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 1 plus c. And in fact, we are done at that point. That's our antiderivative. Remember, we can check this, uh, and we can check it by finding the derivative of our answer. If we were to find our derivative, the 1 half is a coefficient, which would move down into our derivative. And natural log of something ugly. Natural log of something ugly is a fraction where we put the ugly value in our denominator, and we put the derivative of ugly up in the numerator. Derivative of c is 0, so that's gone. And our 2 and our 1 half, they will eliminate each other, leaving us with just x over x squared plus 1, which is what we have up here originally in the green marker. Okay, So it does check out. This answer works for us. Very quickly, some of you eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed this and said, well, Mr. Sylvain, do I need to have the absolute value markers around x squared plus 1, because x squared plus 1 is always positive. In fact, x squared plus 1 is always greater than or equal to 1, yes? Okay, and the answer is no. You don't actually need the absolute value markers for this particular case. It doesn't hurt to have them there, because we do want to make sure that whatever we are taking the natural log of, that that value is positive, since that's the domain of the natural log function. Um, so it doesn't hurt to have them there, but if you did write this with parentheses, you would be okay, because x squared plus 1 is always positive. All right, so there's a bunch of examples to kind of get you going. Let's see if we can get a couple more up uh, at a later time. Um, and if you have any questions, please contact me.